Hello and good afternoon, dear students. Today we are going to learn Class 7 Physics, Chapter 4, Light. When you look at objects around you, you are able to see them because there is light. But at night, in the dark, we are not able to see things or objects because there is no light. So, light enables us to see objects around us. Hence, light can be defined as a form of energy which gives us sensation of vision. Or it is a form of energy which helps us to see objects around us. Light always travels in a straight line and does not change its path. This property of light traveling in a straight line is known as rectilinear propagation of light. The word rectilinear means straight. Hence, from this word, we are able to understand that light always travels in a straight line. Now, what happens when light falls on an object? The object may transmit, scatter, absorb, or bounce back the light depending on the types of objects on which it falls. The bouncing back of light or the returning back of light from the surface of an object in the same medium is known as reflection of light. Reflection of light depends upon the nature of object on which it falls. Firstly, let us see what happens when light falls on a transparent substance. When light falls on a transparent substance, it allows all the light to pass through and does not reflect any light, which is why it appears transparent. Secondly, let us see for an opaque substance. An opaque substance absorbs a little of light but reflects most of the light that falls on it. Thirdly, a smooth and highly polished surface such as a mirror reflects all the light that falls on it. In this chapter, we are also going to study about mirrors. A mirror is a smooth and highly polished surface that reflects all the light falling on it. The smooth surface can be flat or a little curved. On this basis, we can classify mirrors as plain and spherical. Plain mirrors are those mirrors which have a flat reflecting surface. Spherical mirrors are those mirrors which have a curved surface. Spherical mirrors are further classified as concave mirror and convex mirror. Concave mirrors are those mirrors in which the reflecting surface is curved inwards. And convex mirrors are those mirrors in which the reflecting surface is bulged outwards. The figure here shows the types of mirrors, as discussed in the previous slide that there are two types of uh, mirror, a plane mirror and a spherical mirror. Figure A shows a plane mirror. The smooth side shows a reflecting surface. Figure B are the two types of spherical mirrors. In figure 1, we can see that the reflecting surface is curved inwards. And this is a concave mirror. In figure 2, we see that the reflecting surface is bulged outwards. And this type of mirror, where the reflecting surface is bulged outwards, are the convex mirror. There are certain terms related to reflection which needs to be understood. Referring to this figure, we will explain and understand each one of them. The first one is the reflecting surface. If you look at the figure, XY is the reflecting surface. The reflecting surface can be defined as the smooth, shiny surface which reflects the light. The second one is the incident ray. In the figure, AO is the incident ray. The incident ray can be defined as the ray of light which is falling on the reflecting surface. The third one is the reflected ray. In the figure, OB is the reflected ray. 
The reflected ray can be defined as the ray of light which bounces or returns back after striking the reflecting surface in the same medium. The next one is point of incidence. In this figure, O is the point of incidence. The point of incidence is the point where the incident ray strikes on the reflecting surface. The next one is normal. In this figure, ON is known as normal. Normal is the perpendicular which is drawn on the reflecting surface at the point of incidence. The next one is angle of incidence. The angle of incidence in this figure is denoted by small letter i. The angle of incidence is the angle which the incident ray makes with the normal. That is, the angle between the normal and the incident ray is known as the angle of incidence. The next one is the angle of reflection. In this figure, the angle of reflection is denoted by small letter r. So, angle of reflection can be defined as the angle which the reflected ray makes with the normal or it is the angle between the reflected ray and the normal. The last one is plane. A plane is a flat, two-dimensional surface without any thickness. A ray of light which strikes a reflecting surface gets reflected back obeying certain laws. These laws are known as laws of reflection. We have two laws of reflection. This is a very important topic. There are two laws of reflection. We will see them one by one. Number one law states, states that the angle of incidence is always equal to the angle of reflection. That is the angle I, I here is the angle of incidence, is equal to angle R. Angle R means the angle of reflection. This is the first law. The second law of reflection is that the incident ray, the reflected ray, and the normal, they all lie in the same plane. Now, there are some notes that you have to remember. Number one note is that when the incident ray strikes the reflecting surface normally, which means if the incident ray falls on the reflecting surface normally or perpendicularly, which means the angle between the incident ray and the reflecting surface is 90 degree, then the reflected ray retraces the path in backward direction. So you can see this in figure 4.4. In this case, when the incident ray is normal to the reflecting surface, the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection both are equal to zero degree. Number two, the rays of light are reversible. This means that the laws of reflection still hold when the incident and the reflected rays are reversed. That means we can reverse the incident ray and the reflected rays. Even if it is reversed, the laws of reflection still hold. Now we will study about the two types of reflection of light, regular and irregular reflections. First, let us study about the regular reflection. Regular reflection can be defined as when a parallel beam of light falls on a highly polished and smooth surface such that all the rays of the beam are reflected parallel to each other, then such a reflection is known as regular or specular reflection. Which means that when a parallel beam of light falls on the reflecting surface, then the reflected rays or the rays of light which is reflected will be parallel to each other. Let us see some examples of regular reflection. Regular reflection can be observed in the reflection in a plain mirror, still water, and highly polished floor. The rays of light 
reflected from the surface follow all the laws of reflection that we have discussed earlier. If you look in this figure 4.6, we will observe that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. And the second law, the incident ray, the reflected ray, and the normal all lie on the same plane. So, the regular reflection follows the two laws of reflection. The second type of reflection is the irregular reflection. Irregular reflection is also known as diffused reflection. Irregular reflection occurs when light falls on a rough surface like road, door, ordinary floor, and table. Such a surface might look smooth, but if we observe closely, then it appears rough. Irregular reflection means when a parallel beam of light falls on a rough surface, then different parts of the surface reflect the incident light in different directions. Such a reflection can be seen in scratched mirror and rippling water. And this type of reflections in which the reflected rays are directed in different directions is known as irregular or diffused reflection. Even in this case, the reflected rays obeys the two laws of reflection. Real and virtual images. When an object is placed in front of a mirror, the reflected rays of the object from the mirror forms an image. Depending on the types of images formed, images can be classified into two types. Number one, real image, and number two, virtual image. First, let us study and understand what is a real image. Let us define what is a real image. Real image can be defined as when the rays of light are reflected in such a way that they actually meet at some point on the screen. The image so formed is called real image. To understand better about the real image, we will see the characteristics of a real image. The characteristics of a real image are as follows. Number one, it can be taken on a screen. This means when a screen is placed in front of the mirror, the object, uh, the image of the object can be obtained on that screen. Number two, it is always inverted. It is always inverted means it appears upside down. The side of the object changes in the image. That means if um, in the upside of the object appears to be the downside in the image and the downside of the object appears to be the upside in the image. That, which means that it is always inverted or it is always upside down. Number three. Its size may be the same or smaller or bigger than the size of the object depending on the distance of the object from the mirror. Number four, it is formed in front of the mirror. The second type of image is the virtual image. Now let us see what is meant by a virtual image. We can define virtual image as when the rays of light are reflected in such a way that they appear to meet at a certain point but do not actually meet on the screen. Such type of image formed is known as virtual image. To understand better about the virtual image, we will study their characteristics. The characteristics of a virtual image are as follows. Number one, it cannot be taken on a screen. Unlike a real image, the virtual image cannot be taken on a screen. Number two, it is always erect. It is always erect means it is always upright. Which means that the upside of the object remains as the upside in the image and the downside of the object remains as the downside in the image. Which means that it is always erect or upright. Number three, its size may be the same or smaller or bigger than the size of the object 
depending on the distance of the object from the mirror. Number four, it is formed behind the mirror. So a virtual image is formed behind a mirror or it appears, this image appears to come somewhere from behind the mirror. This is all for this video. The continuation of this chapter will be shown in the next video. So, see you in the next video.